Today I have a pretty dress to show you, a true wrap dress with a really flowy fabric and colors that sort of represent the country where I live in. Sneak peek! Keep watching! Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I have a dress to share with you that I've made a few months ago. I was a pattern tester for Closet Core Patterns, formerly known as Closet Case Patterns. And today they are releasing the LED wrap dress and it's a dress designed for woven fabrics and there's a few variations there in the design. As I mentioned in the introduction, this is a true wrap dress. It means that the bodice and the skirt are attached and they truly wrap over you. You know, it's not a fake wrap in the bodice or the skirt in any way, shape or form. It is a true wrap dress. And there are two sleeve variations. One is a short dolman sleeve, which is the one I've chosen. The other bodice option has a longer type dolman sleeve, about six inches longer than the shorter one. For shaping on the bodice, they have released pleats underneath the bust and at the back. So instead of having darts anywhere, you sew little pleats. Skirt has three length options. One is above the knee, one is midi, one is ankle length, sort of maxi. And Inside the neckline, it's finished with facings that are understitched and interfaced, of course. And in between the bodice and the skirt, there's a waistband. And of course, you have your belts that tie and you leave an opening on one of the sides where you put one of them ties through. And it's always a big mystery of how to actually tie them. I think there's a lot of ways you can tie them at the side or at the back in the center too. About the fabrics, you can choose a lot of types of fabrics that will work with this type of design. It just depends on the look that you're going for. And I've put a graphic here. If you want a more structured look, you want that skirt to poke out a little bit more and just be a bit more dramatic in the look. You can choose something more structured like linen, cotton, chambrays, poplins, that type of fabric, shirtings, voiles, maybe cotton gauze, double gauze, that sort of thing. Um, but if you want a softer, flowier look, you can go for the fabrics that drape a little bit nicer, like linen rayon blends, rayon, tensile twill, crepes, silks, that type of thing. And I think for me, in my personal preference, the flowy type fabrics would be my preference. Uh, for a style that has a little bit more volume on the skirt, I tend to go to the flowy styles for skirts that are straight or slim or just um, tighter fitting uh, type of designs I would choose the structured ones so in this case I chose 100% rayon very lightweight very flowy of course that meant I had to adapt one item there of the sewing construction because my fabric was just not going to cope with the method that was described in the pattern this pattern has been released in two separate drafts so there is one from 0 to 20 and that is the one that I have tested and the other one is from 14 to 30 US. So you can see the measurements here, I've put them on the screen of the smallest and largest body measurements for each draft. The biggest difference between them is that the 0 to 20 draft is made for a B cup bodice. Oh the bugs! <laughs> meaning that it was drafted for a two inch difference between the high bust and the full bust and for the draft the 14 to 30 it's drafted with four inches of difference and that is a D sewing cup not bra cup sizes ladies <laughs> I have talked about this in a video previously it is not the same bra cup size that you wear but the sewing cup size when you look at finished garment measurements there's zero to minimal ease at the waist. You know, you fit it around yourself and that is sort of adjustable with wrap styles like this, with true wrap styles, because you can adjust the ties looser or tighter. You know, you can have a play with the waist right there, but it is drafted to have minimal ease at the waist, plenty of ease at the hips. And this is where it differs between the B cup and the D cup. For my size that I chose on the 0 to 20 draft, there's about three and three quarter inches of positive ease at the bust. And for the other draft with a D, for sort of the equivalent size, there would be about five and a third inches of positive ease. In my case, I chose a size 16 based on my body measurements for the 0 to 20 draft. Now these exact body measurements fall into the size 14 of the 14 to 30 draft. But the difference is that there's a D cup there and the other one that there's a B cup. 
I am neither of these. I'm not a B, I am not a D. And in a style like this, you can really tell that I'm right in the middle. I do need a little bit more space. I am a C cup, sewing C cup. And I did need a little bit more space on that B cup bodice. But had I made the D one, I'm pretty sure it would have been just too much room, you know, for me. So I guess that will happen if you're a C cup. And I've been sewing for a long time. I know that my difference is a three inch difference. It's not a two or a four. I do think that wrap styles are sort of really sensitive to cup sizes and also to the height of your bust. The, the bust apex is not really marked on the pattern. There's no darts or anything, but depending on where the fullness is, where it's gonna hit, and crossover it can differ from person to person even if you have the same full bust measurement you know so things to consider about wrap styles I did not make a muslin I just went with my body size I did do some flat pattern measurements and thought it was going to be okay knowing at the back of my mind you know the crossover I would just have to wait and see and probably have a pin there like most woven wrap styles I have ever made I always need a pin right there because I'm not gonna wear a cami underneath if you've been just used to sewing knit styles quick and easy makes when you step into an intermediate make like this that is woven has quite a few steps you might find it that it's really involved make but it's really not there's no zippers you know it's just a whole bunch of straight seams so it's not a hard make, it's not hard to do. You have your bodice pieces front and back. You have two of each. You know, of course, you have two separate bodice pieces for the front because they will overlap. And for the back, you cut the bodice piece twice, not on the fold, there is a center back seam. You will have facings, the back facings, and the two front facings. Those are interfaced, of course. These bodices have those release pleats that I mentioned that will give all the shaping for the bust and the waist. And then you have your skirt pieces, two front skirt pieces. And then your back skirt also has a center back seam. And then there's a lot of little waistband pieces because there's a back waistband that you cut twice, one inner, one outer. And same for the front. You have two on each side, one inner, one outer, so it's four of them. Now I'll show you one little thing I did about the waistbands to adapt to the fabric I was using. This is a piece of my fabric and it's where I'm going to be cutting out the waistbands, the front and the back. Some of those pieces need to be interfaced. This is the grain line, the direction on this fabric and that is how these pieces need to be cut. You can see the arrows pointing the grain line there. Having the section of the fabric I know I'll need to cut these out, I just fused a piece of interfacing first and then I can go ahead and like put my pieces there, pin them onto the fabric and cut them out and that will avoid me cutting separate pieces of interfacing and then trying to fuse them onto this rayon that will distort tremendously, shrink, all those things. I have worked with rayon a lot and it's a really flimsy fabric for a waistband so this back waistband is supposed to have one of them interfaced and that will be the outer one and the inner one won't be interfaced but I've decided to interface both both pieces so inner and outer waistbands will be interfaced these front ones need to be cut four times so I've got two here both interfaced and now I need to cut another one of these put the pattern piece on the fabric again and I'll be block fusing again so I have my fabric there both wrong sides there enough for it to fit comfortably and I've cut some interfacing to fit there comfortably one for that side one for the other side so I'll fuse those first and then I'll place this other front waistband I have to cut again there and just repeat there and basically all my waistband pieces will be interfaced the outer and the inner and that will just give more structure to this flimsy fabric rayon i am sorry if you can hear my neighbors laughing i cannot control that and that is why i haven't been filming outside lately i might have to go somewhere else before i show you the dress i will just mention that this pattern uses a lot of fabric I mean, it might not be a lot of fabric for you, but it is a lot of fabric for me. Depending on the length of the skirt that you choose or whether you're using the bodice that has the shorter dolman or the longer, 
you might end up needing to use anywhere from three to like six and a half yards depending on the size that you're choosing so that is a lot of fabric at least for me in my books I've chosen the shorter skirt and the bodice with the shorter sleeve in hopes of using the least amount of fabric possible I do not buy three yards of fabric ever like I don't have fabric in my stash that has that length I just don't do that when I buy fabric I like I would buy tops two meters if I'm really splurging and in this specific fabric I had two and three 2.3 meters in this fabric and I thought I could get it out of the fabric I tried my best but still I had to use another different fabric for the facings and for the ties so just keep it in mind it is a beautiful design only very fabric hungry in my opinion and it is sort of limiting when you're trying to just sew up your stash and you're not going to shops to buy the fabric that you need that sort of thing you know so I'm telling you that so you're not shocked to see the different colors in my dress <laughs> I got this fabric for my birthday spree that my husband treated me to at the beginning of the year just before lockdown turned 41 and I bought a lot of fabric that day and it's got the Brazilian flag colors yellow and green I live in Brazil by the way and I think this will be a souvenir type dress for me you know I'm not always going to live in Brazil we do move around countries and I think this is going to just remind me that I did live here <laughs> and I really liked living here so you can see my black facings in there I'll just mention some of the construction aspects as I show you you've got the ties right there uh, basically before you put anything together there is quite a lot of steps about stay stitching and I do appreciate that being in the pattern um, you stay stitch everything all the necklines down the front even the skirt pieces the side seams of the skirt the waist around the waist that could all stretch and especially in a fabric like this uh, rayon is known for stretching like almost immediately <laughs> so I did spend my time and followed all the instructions and stay stitched the skirt pieces the bodice everything you know um, once you've got all that stay stitch you do assemble your bodices and you do those little pleats there's little marks on the patterns where you sew them they're not darts they're pleats so they open here on the top and this is how you get the waist shaping and the volume for the bust up above there's no darts on the side and at the back you have a center back seam on the bodice with the little tiny pleats there at the back as well and that gives it a little bit of shaping and a little bit of blousing at the back which I think looks really pretty and after you have your bodice pieces ready stay stitched and the pleats done you sew your shoulder seams of the bodice right there and then you assemble your facings the, the facings I've shown you how they look you just sew them up here on the shoulder seams and you know if you've stay stitched your bodice and then block fusing like I like to do they want the form and they will match you will sew them all the way around there flip them snip and the stitch all those things and that will keep the facings inside they are black so I'm sure you're not going to see my under stitching there but they don't flip out or anything if you've done everything correctly uh, that's why it's really important to stay stitch and not skip those types of steps so you don't end up with a gaping neckline at the back the skirt also has a center back seam and I have surged and pressed all my seams open like that super neat and then you attach the back to the front skirt so you have all these extended skirt pieces there and you know if you've stay stitched they're not going to stretch out the waist and all that because then you have to unite the bodice to the skirt with these little waistband pieces and I'll open this up you know this sounds like a lot but it's not really it's really fun to put together things like this and it's good to to dive into these intermediate projects I absolutely love sewing these types of projects like this out of woven fabrics so you know I'm usually not sewing that many knits so I find this so, sort of simple to do but I do understand that if you're mainly sewing knits it's, this might seem like a huge project so it just depends where you're at when you open up the dress you can see this is inside and you can see the waistband there is double that's why there was two of them there on the top the bodice is enclosed within the two waistband pieces so it's clean there on the top and then the waistband inside you would fold it under with a smaller seam allowance than what you're using everywhere so it's five eighths everywhere I think it was half an inch here 
that means that the inner waistband will end up a tiny bit longer than the one out here and that means that it's protruding and you can stitch it in the ditch there so you won't have any when you stitch in the ditch there you won't have anything showing and then it catches the waistband on the inside so super nice technique very neat inside you do when you're sewing this you do leave a space there and that has to sort of be finished by hand right at the very end and this is where the ties will go through you have your tie that's clean finished within the waistband not hard to do it's very well explained in the instructions and it goes through there comes out through here and then you have your tie from the other side and you play around however you want to tie it up um, I've tied it in the center tie in the back on the side wherever you want um, I do think it would be easier if they had one tie that's shorter than the other the tie coming out from here would be shorter than the one that has to wrap all the way around. If you just do a simple tie on the side, you will have one of the ties be super long. It's because they're both the same length. So if I make that again, I would adjust and make one shorter than the other. And I just figure out how much shorter I want to do it because I do prefer to just have a simple tie on the side and not have it like wrapping all the way around you. Um, so this skirt is not a full circle skirt. I don't even think it's a half circle skirt. It's probably I don't know what it is really, <laughs> an exaggerated A-line skirt. It does have enough volume that it's nice and flowy, but it's not extremely full. And that's why I decided to test this pattern. Um, I only test designs that I like, basically. <laughs> if there's something I would change, I can't test it because if you're testing, you're not supposed to be changing the design, right? So I do like this volume of the skirt. The instructions are very well made. They tell you everything really clearly, like the hem here. It tells you to fold in twice by a quarter of an inch, that sort of thing. To finish the centers of the skirt here, you fold over by a quarter and then you fold over by three eighths. So it's all very clearly done. Now when I have to do folds like this in long seams, I like doing a guide stitch. I just, I just sew with my sewing machine at five, a long stitch. That helps me press super accurately and then I just whip it out and I have perfect creases you know to sew really neatly with so it's a it's a step I do I did make this in one day like sort of from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. sort of thing so I wouldn't say it's a really hard project I also wouldn't say it's like the easiest and fastest dress you can make but it is a pretty dress um, so I'll show you how it looks on this is my Elodie dress from closet core patterns and I'll show you a far away look and then I'll show you more details here's a far away look at my dress I chose the shorter skirt version but I added an inch to that and that hits right above my knee the skirt is fuller than what I usually wear but at least it's not a full circle skirt so I do like the volume of this skirt the bodice hits right at my waist and I'll show you the details up close but it is a full wrap dress that's why you see the ties come all the way around and I did have to use contrast fabric for the ties because I didn't have enough fabric. Okay, there's a little bit of wind blowing but I think there is enough wrap inside maybe if it was a windy day I would put a little pin inside just to be on the safe side because it is a full wrap dress so you know this could fly open this bodice hits me right at my natural waist I didn't have to adjust the waist it is fitted at the waist there's absolutely no ease at the waist you're meant to wear it snug at the waist and then you have a lot of ease there at the hips with the skirt So underneath the bust there are release pleats here that's how you get the bust volume here there's no side bust darts so that typical dart volume has been taken to the waist they're not darts because they're not closed on the top so it's like you're sewing a pleat and then it just opens up there so that happens here on the front and on the back creates a little bit of blousing there and I think I, I like that look there. Dolman sleeves, I chose the shorter version. There is a longer dolman sleeve and inside there are facings. That's how the neckline is finished, they're understitched. And I do need to have a pin there or else I would be showing more than what I want. Um, I would need a C cup, this is a B cup. I would need to do a tiny full bust adjustment uh, just to get this to cross over a little bit more at this height where I like it to be 
for what I'm comfortable. You know, if I let go of the pin, this will cross over and show a little bit of my bra there and I'm definitely not comfortable with that. So that is the fit of the bodice. I really like this style on myself. So having the pin there makes this crossover where I want it to be and you know, it's all about personal preference. This is as low as I could cope with, with a V neckline. Um, on the side, you can't see anything. It's not gaping, nothing like that. So there's no cleavage uh, showing and that's what I'm comfortable with. And I do like this depth there, although there is a little pin there. Now I can't like do a permanent hand tacking or anything because I need to totally undo it to put it back on. So every time I wear it, I will need to adjust and fiddle and put a pin behind there not visible no one no one's gonna know but if I do make this dress again I will do a small bust adjustment just a small bust adjustment maybe to add an extra inch all across so it would be a half an inch bust adjustment very small and I think that would give me a better crossover for my C cup so I do love this style I think it's super feminine super pretty I think this is a style of dress to wear to go to somewhere nice you know I, I probably wouldn't wear this on a more casual setting just because it's so fitted at the waist, I would sort of be a little bit aware of that. But it is a beautiful feminine style and I really like it. enjoyed sewing it I like how this style looks on me although I know it is a style I am not gonna reach out first when I want to get dressed like to go to the supermarket because it's a little bit too dressed up for that so I would say for me this is a more occasion type dress at least for my style like for going to church or just going to somewhere nice and the fact that the waist is super fitted as well makes it be a little bit more You've got to be wary of that and it might feel a bit constricting maybe if you're eating and things like that. But it is a pretty feminine style. I have observed from different indie pattern companies where they do a B cup and then they do a D cup. And I'm smack in the middle so it's not making it any easier for me at all. Because if I choose one I would have to adjust and do a small bust adjustment. A very small bust adjustment maybe depending on the style. And if I choose the draft with a B. Also, depending on the style, I might need to do a small full bust adjustment. In this case, I do need a small full bust adjustment to have the crossover where I want it to be. So, I will have a play at the bodice. It is a dolman type bodice, so the full bust adjustment is a little bit different, but totally doable. And I will adapt it. Now, to make this dress again, I would have to really find the right fabric and be really motivated to use so much fabric again because it's it's a it's a mind thing for me you know any dress that takes up more than two meters it's like a deal breaker sort of thing for me but what about a wrap top that would be cute that wouldn't use too much fabric let me know if you would like to see how to do a bust adjustment on a dolman type because i think it's not a style that most people would want to do a full bust adjustment on it's not that straightforward but it's not hard and I'm, I'll be glad to show you if you want to see that. No one cares, I won't do it. <laughs> That's all from me. I wanted to show you my pretty Brazilian color dress. I really like the style, I liked sewing it. And it's linked down below, it is not an affiliate link. Um, Closet Core doesn't have an affiliate program. So if you go and buy it through there, it's, you know, it's for them. I am actually not gaining anything financially from pattern testing or reviewing this pattern I just wanted to share with you because it is a lovely style so that's all from me today I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon with more sewing bye